Over the last decade, the quest for alternative forms of medicine has led to the proliferation of many fraudulent practices, techniques designed to steal, not heal. One such fraud originated in the Philippines. It is known as psychic surgery. Its practitioners claim that through the power of faith, they can literally reach into a patient's body and remove tumors and other diseased tissue without the benefit of instruments or anesthesia. They claim these operations are painless and leave no scars. One of the most successful practitioners of this scam is Gary Magno. Known to his followers as the Reverend Monsignor Gary, Magno travels throughout the country performing his so-called surgery on thousands of patients. In March of 1986, Magno was in Arizona. A Phoenix resident named Randy Jones became aware of him when his mother became Magno's patient. Concerned, he decided to undergo the procedure himself in order to learn firsthand its effectiveness. I had heard specifically that my mom was going to see Gary Magno to have operations done. And at about this time, mom started showing signs of being somewhat ill. She was having difficulty moving, difficulty breathing, starting to so show some signs of weight loss. So I decided I would check it out and go and experience what psychic surgery was all about. It was handled as a clandestine operation. Only certain people could find out where Magno was. Only certain information was given out, so you had to know somebody to get in. Good afternoon. Hi, uh, my name is Randy Jones. Oh, uh, Randy Jones. Oh, yes, you called in earlier, I believe. I did, yes. I have two forms that you need to read and sign. One is a release form, and the other is an application for the Holy Spirit of God Church. Uh, just sign it, please. Before the procedure took place, Randy signed these two forms. One of them released Magno from all liability Questions. arising from his Feel procedure, free. as well as swearing under threat of perjury that the signatory was not a police officer. Uh, thank you. Just have a seat and we'll call you when we're ready. Thank you very much. The house was full of people. It was kind of a big social gathering. It was uh, rather nice. A lot of people, all sorts of uh, age groups there, waiting their turn. Hi. I see we have some new faces with us tonight. I'm going to be calling a few names now, and I'd like you to follow me and change your robes. Royce O'Donnell. Dave Copeland and Randy Jones. Well, after some time, my name was called along with the people who were to be prepped for surgery. And those on the list of names would be asked to go into a back bedroom, strip down to our underwear, and don a bathrobe. And then after 15, 20 minutes, we would be called into the room where the operations were taking place in pairs. We were asked to drop our robes. And then we were each put on a separate table. The floor was covered with plastic sheeting. There were two portable massage tables, and they were covered with plastic, and a couple of stainless steel bowls sitting on a little table in the corner. After a few minutes, Mr. Magno came in from another adjoining room, and each one of us was asked to hold a religious object, either a Bible or a cross. In my case, I was asked to hold a cross. Magno said very little, and if he did, it, primarily it was to the assistants. He came up to me, and he pressed his hands down on my leg and started to remove tissue, or what appeared to be tissue, from my leg. And he would take this tissue in his hands and throw it in the second bowl, which was empty. And this uh, whole thing just took a matter of seconds for him to remove that tissue. operation, Randy became convinced that the procedure was a fraud. It was clear in my mind that he wasn't doing anything surgical. And uh, it was pretty obvious to me that he was doing it for his own personal gain. And uh, at the fees that he was charging and the number of patients he was seeing, he must have been clearing an exorbitant amount of money. 
After this encounter, Randy wanted to learn more about a procedure that he now believed was little more than glorified robbery. He contacted Jim Lowell, an expert in health fraud who had studied psychic surgery for 15 years. Psychic surgery is nothing but sleight of hand perpetrated on people by scam artists who are out to take their money. Most of the psychic surgeons have their own tables. There'll be various drapes, towels, cotton balls, things like that that hide the materials that they're going to take out. And so they have these what we call loads of material well camouflaged on their table. So as you get on the table, you don't see that they're there. The idea of theoretically reaching into the person is done by a variety of techniques, but generally it involves covering one hand and folding the other hand into them so it looks like you're reaching in. And when you break the bag, the blood comes out. But it's actually chicken parts and fake blood or chicken blood. They have assistants almost always who will frequently pass them these materials after they pull the supposed tumors they'll be the person will put something in the bowl at the same time take out the next little baggie magno is very crude he does pretty much the same thing over and over and he's not very sophisticated compared with the better psychic surgeons after randy jones contacted the phoenix police department they and the arizona attorney general's office initiated an undercover investigation into magno's operation we decided to pose as a husband and wife team to go in to see magno and uh, when i went in i asked if she could go in and they allowed both of us to go in it there appeared to be uh, some hesitancy on their part but uh, uh, when she became somewhat demanding then they allowed her to come in so I told them that I couldn't be without my husband he's going through a very bad time and I had to be with him we had decided that as soon as the so-called surgery was performed on Dan we were going to make the arrest at that time police officers you're under arrest hold it right there I said hold it get some help in here right now please put your hands up, put your hands up. Gary Magno, his American-born wife, Terry Lynn, and his nephew, Chris Magno Tizone, were charged with the felony offenses of conspiracy and fraud. They were able to post their bond immediately and were released from custody. The next day, they jumped bail and fled to the Philippines. However, authorities believe they have since re-entered the country. Even after presented with the evidence that had been seized after the arrest, both of my parents were absolutely convinced that Magno was legitimate, that in fact he could perform operations and heal people. It was my impression that they felt that I had condemned by my action hundreds of people to die because they would not be able to obtain the services that Gary Magno offered them and that I had stabbed them in the back and that they didn't want to talk to me again. But the operations that Magno did on my mom had no effect. Uh, her health continued to deteriorate. In December, she finally checked into a hospital where it was discovered that she had six major tumors in her body, and ultimately she died. So from the time of the arrest to the time she died, I never did see her again. Gary George Magno is a Philippine national permanent resident alien status in the United States. He is 49 years old, 5 feet 7 inches tall, 150 pounds, with black hair and brown eyes. His wife, Terry Lynn, is 34 years old, 5 feet 4 inches in height, and weighs 125 pounds. She has brown hair and hazel eyes. Police are also looking for Magno's nephew, Chris Tizone. He, too, is a Philippine national and is 33 years old, 5 feet tall, and 136 pounds. He has black hair and brown eyes. Gary Magno is a con man, not a doctor. The only thing he really extracts from his patients are their money, their trust, and ultimately their health. Today he could be anywhere in the United States, so there is a possibility he may still be in the Philippines. If you have any information about Magno or his associates, please contact the Arizona State Attorney's Office or call our toll-free number, 1-800-876-5353.
In a moment, we will meet one of the most successful mystery solvers in the United States. Gene Kiley searches for lost heirs and has returned nearly $8 million to the rightful owners of unclaimed money. You're watching WPXI-TV. It's a new generation and we want a new world. Sequential port, fuel injection, anti-lock brakes. It is come and we want a new world. Visual information center handles great. This Oldsmobile is not our father's. New generation for the sons and daughters. Trofeo. This is the new generation of Oldsmobile. Don't be fooled by commercials where one battery company's toy outlasts the others. The fact is, Energizer was never invited to their playoffs because nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. Stop the bunny, please. And going and go. The painting, Renoir. The vase, Ming. And the wine, Chateau Marmoset. When only the best will Like we said, nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going and going and going and going. Mm. I love the sound of the rain. Mm. And I love the taste of your fresh fruit coffee. Oh, thanks, but it's not fresh fruit. It's new Treka. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going and going. They were lawyers in love on the trail of a brutal killer. Rape? Yeah. A trail that could lead her back to her lover. I'm not like that. Felicia Rashad. He's guilty and I know it. Philip Michael Thomas. Got the wrong man on trial, Lynn. The world premiere thriller, False Witness. Monday. Thursday on Cosby, Theo singing the blues about his problems at school. And the newest Cosby kid belts out a tune of her own. Shake it up, baby. Thursday. Tonight we begin a new feature on Unsolved Mysteries. It's called The Investigators. And in it we'll introduce you to some of the best and brightest mystery solvers in the United States. The area we'll cover tonight is unclaimed money. One out of every 10 Americans has money somewhere they don't even know about. More than $15 billion is currently held in trust by the government and is waiting to be claimed. In this segment, you'll meet super sleuth Gene Kiley, who works for the state of Massachusetts. His job is to track down the rightful owners of that unclaimed money. Gene Kiley's work takes him from obscure New England graveyards to musty Boston libraries. He's searching out family connections, looking for the heirs to inheritances, the owners of forgotten bank accounts, the beneficiaries of misdirected social security payments, you name it. I think it's the best job in the world. I just like the mystery, the, the mystery of solving the, the puzzle. Kylie heads up a staff of 55 people reporting to the state treasurer of Massachusetts. He and his staff have handed out more than $30 million Kylie personally has given away between seven and eight million. We give the easy cases to some of our newer investigators. Uh, in Gene's case, we try to get the more difficult ones because we know that he likes the challenge of a difficult uh, job and he gets it done. He'll go to any ends or any country to find the person and give him the rightful money that's his. The largest check he's ever given away was for more than $200,000. The smallest, just over a dollar. Amazingly, one man refused a check for $5,000. It's a gentleman who was to receive a few thousand dollars from, his, from an account that his mother had left when she had died. And he absolutely refuses to have anything to do with the money, not even to claim it and give it to charity, because he felt that he wasn't good to his mother and that he should not have it or anyway, see it, touch it, or feel it for a second. Gene Cotty's natural competitors are people in the private sector who hunt down heirs to unclaimed fortunes. These private heir finders charge the heirs a fee between 20 and 50% of their inheritance. Since Kylie and the state of Massachusetts charge nothing, he loves to beat the private heir finders at their own game. 
In his most satisfying victory, he solved two cases in a single weekend, each one more than 9,000 miles away from Boston. It all started on a Friday afternoon when Kylie ran into one of his longtime rivals, a private air finder we will call Smith. He told Kylie he was planning an impromptu visit to England. I've got a British girlfriend, and I'm going to take her to England. Oh, well, I hope you're going to relax now when you get over there. I'll certainly try. Okay. Kylie was immediately suspicious. He isn't going over there just for, for vacation. But my feeling is that he was definitely going to do something other than visiting the Tower of London. If he was really on to something, I only had the weekend to, to solve it. Kylie went straight to his files, searching for cases with a tie into Great Britain. He found two. The first involved a man named John J. Conroy, who had been born in England but died in Massachusetts, leaving a large unclaimed inheritance. Kylie immediately called London. Good morning, American consulate. He found that John Conroy's heirs in England had indeed filed an Thanks inquiry on, about his estate. Cheerio. One case solved. Bingo. Case number two. Kylie had also found an unclaimed fortune left to the heirs of Thomas Costello, but this case proved a little tougher. Kylie himself is Irish, and he knew the Costello name originated in the Connemara region of Ireland. He also knew a man playing guitar in an Irish band in Boston. The man was originally from Connemara, so Kylie went to see him. Got some money for some people in the old country, but the only clue I got is he's from Connemara. Yeah. My aunt knew Tom Costello from Connemara. He had four brothers. She came out here in the late 20s. She went oh. to school with him. Oh, where was she from? She was from uh, Spiddle. Spiddle? Listen. Yeah. It was now late Friday night in Boston and early Saturday morning in Ireland. Kylie had an idea. Where better to find the whole town in one place than in church on Sunday? He called the priest in the tiny village of Spiddle. Cheerio to you now. Bye. My whole ball of wax was left in the hands of this little priest over in that little town. I have an announcement to make. Yesterday, I received a phone call from a man in Boston looking for the family of a late Thomas Costello. Apparently, the family has fallen in for an inheritance of $20,000. Is there anybody in the congregation that might know the Costello family? Uh, Father, I know the Costellos. They're, they're out the Skiak Road, uh, near the Dunphy farm. All right, then. Would you see me in the... The Irish yeah. priest found four living relatives of the deceased Thomas Costello. God bless you. Second case solved. Gleefully, Kylie contacted the proper authorities in England and Ireland so that when the private air finder Smith showed up, he would be told that both cases were already resolved. Kylie later found he had beaten his rival by a scant 45 minutes. Cheerio. Two weeks later, I had the occasion to meet the air finder, and all I asked him is that I hope he had a very relaxing vacation. Several of Gene Cotty's cases do remain unsolved, despite his best efforts. One of these cases concerns a man named Walter Philip White, who left a fortune of more than $100,000. White was an Aleut Indian born in Sitka, Alaska in 1898. He died in England in 1972. During World War II, Walter White distinguished himself as a radar expert, then worked in Massachusetts after the war. When White died, he left no will, but he had a sister named Olga, who had two children. These nieces or nephews of Walter White are the heirs to a $100,000 fortune. The next case concerns a woman named Nora Devine, who may still be alive. She or her heirs have more than $50,000 waiting to be claimed. Nora Devine made her living as a bookbinder. She was born in Iowa around 1918, and as an adult lived in the south end of Boston. We have no photograph of Nora Devine. There's a $50,000 bank account in Nora's name waiting for her or her heirs. 
If you have information that can unite the rightful claimants with the money that belongs to them, please contact Gene Kiley at the Massachusetts State Treasurer's Office in Boston or call our toll-free number, 1-800-876-5353. It's got to go to the right. Wendy's is introducing a new menu. No, a little more to the right. I, I mean left. No, go back to the right. We call it Wendy's Super Value Menu. Everything is at a special low price. No, that, that's close, but it's not right. Delicious food like Biggie drinks, Biggie fries, chili, including our new Junior Bacon Cheeseburger. All at prices that leave change in your pocket. That's perfect. No, it's not. It's got to go back to the left. Wendy, don't you have anything else to do? Come try the Super Value Menu at Wendy's. Everybody skippy dipping, mm. scooping it for finger licking. Big people, little people, everyone, cause it's good, 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 good fun. Whoa, everybody skippy dipping till it's all skipped out. Hi, folks. I'm multi purpose vivids, tough towels, and powerful cleaners. All in one. I wipe out tough, greasy dirt wherever I find it. <laughs> Try me and the four other spivids. That's right. We cut the work down to a wipe. It's Christine's secret confession when passion drives her wild. Oh, my. She bears her soul to a devil of a nun. I am ashamed to say that I have just had an impulsive carnal liaison with a man. Woo! It's none other than Sister Dan. I don't know where to start. Were you naked? No! It's Christine's secret confession on Night Court next. Tonight, the catastrophic quake. How did it happen? How can people protect themselves in the future? Tom Brokaw's in San Francisco with the story on an NBC News special. Next week on Unsolved Mysteries. For over 100 years, the inhabitants of Marfa, Texas have seen bizarre lights hovering over the desert sands. Science can offer little explanation as to what they might be, but local legend has given them the name Ghost Lights. Join me next week for another edition of Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> Thursday is a brand new night on NBC. You'll see all new episodes of your favorite comedies and the show the critics are raving about, Mancuso FBI. Start the night with a special Cosby show. Then there's a mutiny on a different world, blind love on Cheers, and a marriage go-round on Dear John. Then it's Mancuso FBI. The New York Times calls it first rate. Robert Loggia is solid, gritty, and authoritative, says the San Diego Union. Don't miss Mancuso FBI on a special night Thursday. They've got reason to celebrate. We've got the money. That's my dough. A million bucks that could break him in a million pieces. We've got something that belongs to us. I want to be alone with you. It's Richard Crenna. Check, please. And Time Daily in the movie you missed Tuesday. I can't believe this. It's now Friday. I'll break you in Stop. Coming this Thursday, October 26th. To a location near you. Ames Discount Department Store. Come home to the best. Only on NBC.